morning, Muskegon. This is I on Muskegon, and I'm Jim Riley here in Muskegon's Clear Channel Studios with my engineer, the legendary Oscar Rodney. And we welcome all of you to radio, computer, smartphone, and podcast land to I on Muskegon. We are Muskegon County's only political talk radio show, and we're a show that values your input. So give us a call right now. Our phone number is 231 830 3109. That's 830 3109. And that fabulous intro music, which we're going to be playing throughout the show, uh, is from the ever insightful Roger Miller uh, singing Government. And that's originally from uh, the musical uh, Big River, which actually I saw on Broadway uh, back in the 80s. Um, enough of that. Remember this fact, folks. Even if you live here in Muskegon County, you really do need to listen to and to participate in this show because what happens in Muskegon doesn't necessarily stay in Muskegon. It doesn't only happen in Muskegon. What happens in Muskegon may very well be happening in your county, your city, your township. It most likely is happening right where you live, wherever you live. So listen up. We'll try to find out what the power brokers in our community don't want you to know. And I bet it's real similar to the same bunch of secrets the big money spenders in your town would just assume you didn't know either. Today is October 9, and our on our third segment, by the way, uh, hang on. We will be talking about an important election uh, coming up next. The talk month, of Muskegon. No idea News Talk 1090. WKBZ. But first, it's a little more than a week since the Muskegon County Board of Public Works, comprised primarily of your elected uh, uh, Muskegon County commissioners, voted for an additional five years of a countywide sewer rate increases. And that total is going to be about almost 56% combined. And if you add that, to the uh, increases that we've already had over the last two years. That's almost a double in the uh, county sewer rates. That's a big deal. And, and really, why does this matter? Well, obviously it matters if, uh, if you live in the county because you're going to pay more for your sewer rates. Um, it matters if you're a company. Obviously, uh, companies uh, uh, very likely pay much more uh, in sewer rates. Um, but it really matters, I think, much more deeply because when you increase the cost of doing business, it affects what companies think about their location and many companies may consider leaving Muskegon County because of these increases it may be the straw that broke the camel's back companies that are thinking of moving to Muskegon from elsewhere may give this some consideration because of these increases companies in Muskegon that are thinking of expanding may decide hey I'm going to increase I'm going to uh, expand in another area because of these increases Um, but I also think there's a, a far bigger problem and that is When you have increases of this magnitude, when you double the rates inside of seven years, this may reflect a deeper problem in Muskegon County's leaders and how they make decisions and the decisions that they make. Now, I am lucky today, we all are lucky today, to have a member of that Public Works Board with us today, and that is Muskegon County Drain Commissioner Dave Fisher. And good morning, Commissioner Fisher. Thank you for joining us at Eye on Muskegon. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for having me. Well, Dave, you're a, you're a member of that Public Works Board. You're uh, one of the few members that is not one of the Muskegon County Commissioners. Um, and uh, you've got expense, extensive background in sewers and drains and the politics that surrounds them. And since you're relatively uh, new, newly elected uh, within, what, the last uh, year and a half uh, or so uh, as drain commissioner, so you, you're not really responsible uh, for, for uh, really how we got to here. So it kind of makes you an interesting person uh, to have a conversation with. But what I'd like to focus on are four things. A little history of the wastewater system, why we have the problem that we have, which, of course, is uh, massive increases in in rates, Um, what might have been done in the past, what decisions that might have been done in the past by the the county leaders um, uh, in the past uh, to keep us out of this mess in the first place, and finally, some ideas that will help us uh, through this going forward and how we can avoid another big surprise. So I'm going to let, let it start with you. Uh, how about a little history of that wastewater system? Well, thank you, Jim. The wastewater system is a um, community effort. It was, it was done uh, through a lot of federal support and federal grants back in 1972. Prior to 1972, municipalities that had public uh, waste treatment were being um, taken care of vi- originally um, by their own uh, treatment plants. There was uh, several of them on all the different lakes. Uh, In 1972, all of those were shut down, and all of the public sewer was sent out to the uh, wastewater system where it goes right now. 
Um, and that's over the last uh, 40 years. There's been a lot of growth in the outlying communities, and, and that waste is now going there also. Dave, you mentioned something to me that when it was built, that uh, that Sappy was essentially built for the, the paper mill, which finished its last name was Sappy, uh, that, that it was almost specifically built for them and that they paid a very significant amount. Can you explain a little of that? Well, it necessarily wasn't built exactly for them, but it was designed around the fact that their flow was about 60 percent uh, of that waste stream uh, for since its inception, 1972. In fact, uh, after it was built in 1972, we had to do a a small expansion uh, because they had expanded uh, beyond the uh, capabilities of treatment. Uh, we went from the high 30s into the low 40 million gallons a day uh, treatment capacity. Uh, and over the years, um, because of the way the, the uh, funding is done and the, and the debt and, and the operations are paid for, uh, Sappy Paper and its predecessor uh, have paid uh, approximately 50 to 60 percent of all of the costs of the operation of that system for now, all now, those years. Since that peak uh, of, of use of the system, uh, the, the, the the sewage rates, or not the rates, but the, the the flow is what I guess you folks call it, has been coming down. When did it start that downward um, uh, trend? I can't tell you exactly um, because it has to All do with SAPI. Um, I would believe over the last um, 15 to 20 years, SAPI was uh, heading in the direction of, of trying to conserve on their costs um, through... Um, reducing the flow that they were sending to the wastewater. So it's it's been a number of years. Now it they, started out slow, but it's it was a number of years ago. SAPI has been under fire for at least the last 10 years, uh, uh, perhaps longer than that, but f from environmental groups. Um, I, I know that there was a class action lawsuit in Lakeside where, uh, uh, I guess because of the smell and noise, and, and everyone, or not every, everyone, but many people who live near the paper mill got, got checks. Um, so they've been under fire. Uh, the unions uh, obviously have been very militant. I've heard some of the union members back in the old days, you know, saying we don't, we don't, if we don't get our contract, we'll shut this place down. So it's been pretty clear to to the average citizen who's been following uh, Sappy's history that that they were under fire, and certainly in the last uh, five, six, seven, eight years, they have been cutting back. Uh, should should the uh, the people who have been managing the wastewater system, could they have done anything differently? Because we, we have a problem currently where the rates are going up significantly, and they're going up. The, the only answer I've been hearing is because we have lost one of the biggest, or by far and away the biggest payer, which is SAPI. Um, why, why do we have this problem now? Why, why is it hitting us uh, other than SAPI, or is it simply just uh, SAPI left and we're, and we're done? Jim, we've been a one-horse town for a long time, um, and unfortunately, when it comes to waste treatment, because they've been such a large percentage of our of our flow, and the fact that the cost per gallon is directly related to how many gallons we get on an average monthly uh, um, time period, that really there's nothing, nobody that can really be blamed for it. It's it's the fact that that flow has disappeared slowly over a long period of time and we have not been able to find a replacement for that flow okay so there 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 was a there was an option which would have been finding a replacement for the flow wouldn't there also been an option of downsizing the uh the the, ex the expense the cost of the uh the entire wastewater treatment system is that was that an option that option has been uh, being looked at and, and actually being applied uh, to the best of our ability but uh, it's it's a difficult topic to to take a look at it's it's very broad but the system was built large enough to handle 43 million gallons a day, and the cost to run that system is a very stable cost. The electric cost uh, and the manpower costs are the only things that you really have to deal with, and um, we have reduced in, in the manpower area, and we've tried to do some reductions in the cost of uh, the electric by downsizing pump sizes and what have you, but it is still a very relative uh, Flatline. You can't really decrease it. Okay, we got a caller. Let's uh, let's take that caller. Are you there? Yes, yes, we are caller. Uh, yes, right I had a question. Um, what is the difference between the Muskegon County water system and its um, treatment plant and the Muskegon Heights water system and its treatment plant? 
and uh, and the difference between Muskegon Township, where I live, and its water treatment plant, and Muskegon County's uh, water system and its treatment plant, where do they interconnect, and where do they not? Okay, I, uh, caller, I believe, and I'm going to have Dave uh, answer me or uh, follow up on this, but I believe that you're perhaps confusing the water systems, the water filtration plants, with the county sewer system. Uh, you're correct. Muskegon Heights has its own water filtration plant, as does the city of Muskegon. But today we are talking about the uh, wastewater treatment system. And uh, Dave, uh, did, did I have that correct? Yeah, that's very correct in there, Jim. Uh, we have a filtration plant in the city of Muskegon, which treats water from Lake Michigan and supplies fresh water to all of the uh, homes that are connected to the public water system. There's also a treatment plant in the Muskegon Heights area. Uh, our topic today is is once that water is used, whether it's industrial use or homeowner use, where does it go? And it goes out to a single treatment a single treatment plant, and it's out in Eggleston and Moreland Township, and that is the treatment of the waste. Okay, well that's okay. Thank you for that explanation. And uh, by the way, caller, we uh, appreciate your call here. We will be uh, talking about the uh, the water filtration and what we pay for water down the road. But thank you very much for calling. Yes, because um, I was really curious about that, you know, the difference in the operation, how it works. So those were just, because it's operated, it seems like separately, run separately with the city of Muskegon in Muskegon Heights. Well, we appreciate that. And like I say, we'll be talking that at another time. So thanks so much for the call. Okay, back, uh, we just have a few minutes before break here. And what I'm uh, very interested in is, okay, I think you've answered is why we have the problem. And, and I, I may disagree a little bit as to that, that there was nothing that could have been done to fix this. Uh, certainly uh, the, the county um, just, uh, oh, golly, about two weeks ago, just uh, voted and to approve um, new union contracts for the wastewater treatment workers, which included uh, what many, many have called, you know, gold or platinum uh, retirement benefits, uh, full uh, de defined benefit retirement plans, which are definitely not seen in the private sector any longer. So it doesn't seem to me that the county, uh, if it is very serious in reducing uh, the cost of of the employee and the employment side, uh, that they're that they're serious because in fact they're they're doing they're making moves. Uh, by the way, this this uh, union contract that was just approved without any public um, uh, vetting at all uh, is a three year contract, which includes, by the way, annual automatic annual increases for those employees. So um, uh, we will be coming back. Let's see, we've got a few minutes here. Uh, back to the, the, the current problem that we have. Um, am I wrong in, uh, in that uh, the union costs are significant and don't seem to be have been attended to in any way? Well, I can't speak to what happens with the union negotiations. That is uh, an administrative function that works with the full board, and it's outside the parameters of the public works board. So I'm not uh, very much involved in that other okay. than I see it and read about it like you do, Jim. Uh, the labor costs at the wastewater system are a, a substantial cost of the everyday operation and maintenance cost. Um, but one of the things that we didn't talk about in here is that the the actual rate itself is... is uh, about 50 percent is the operations, and the other 50 percent, which is a huge portion of it, is the debt. We've we've got a huge debt load on that system, and no matter what you do with the the, the unions in there, you can't affect the debt. That's true, and that's that's why I, I believe that the uh, the Public Works Board did make the right decision in um, uh, in voting for the. Uh, 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 for the for the increase, the, the, it's very important that we continue to pay those bonds off. Um, are we coming up to a break here shortly? Um, okay, couple. Uh, we're going to move on from from this specific question. But what I'd like to uh, focus on when we come back, and then we got a few minutes here now. What can be done? What could have been done to, to, to keep us out of this situation where we now have a doubling of the cost? We are there's. Without this doubling of a cost, there would have been perhaps a bond default coming down the road. Um, uh, or are we just a hard luck county? I mean, is this just bad luck? Uh, the fact that we had one uh, big monster uh, the payer here certainly wasn't news to anybody. And the fact that this big one monster 
uh, user of the wastewater system that it was shutting down, that it was, as you said earlier, it was uh, reducing its its uh, use. It was um, uh, certainly under fire from any number of places, uh, or, you know, like I say, the environmentalists and the unions and the, the, the local residents and, and others. Um, this isn't new. Uh, John Snyder, uh, who's a county commissioner, said at the meeting when the, when the, uh, the vote was made to increase the rates very significantly, said, hey, We've, we've been talking about this for years, and no one's done anything. And yet now we get this last minute, uh, this last minute increase. Go ahead. And, and Jim, you're very right. I mean, the, 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 there were questions on the table back in the 80s that, you know, theoretical questions were asked. Well, what is life after SAPI? I mean, what do we do if we lose this customer? And what were the answers? The answer at that time was we haven't. It's not happening. They'll never go away. I believe that uh, we've lived in denial for a number of years, and when all of a sudden the flow started going down, 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 uh, we did minor adjustments over the years. But when SAPI left, uh, and I can't recall exactly, but five or six years ago, when SAPI left and they shut the spigot off, they had already decrease their flow by about 75 percent so, so there was ample the warning there was ample warning to, sure. the, to the to the leaders the people that we've elected to make the right decisions that they've got to do something in other words the 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 uh the airplane was running out of gas and they should have started looking for a place to land but in fact they said hey you know get the stewardesses out and and break out the cocktails because we're having a good time up in up in the up in the air the answer to that is 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 an affirmative uh it's it's a big yes uh, because everybody has known what's going on and and i can't sit here and tell you that nothing was done because there was a lot of discussions there's been a lot of economic development efforts out there that have not worked the okay. reality of it is, is they're gone and the flow's gone okay well i appreciate that we will be back we've got a little break coming up talk to you shortly Well, you dead gum government, you sorry so and so's. You got your damn hands in every pocket of my clothes. Well, you dead gum, dead gum, dead gum government. I'm America's digital goddess, Kim Commando, and I have your answers to everything digital. I just recently ordered the eBay imitation of an iPad. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Tell me you didn't do that. My anniversary is next Tuesday. She's your soulmate. And you buy her a Chinese iPad clone for your third anniversary? Man. Catch the show Sundays at noon on News Talk 1090 WKBZ, the talk of Muskegon. Betsy, look at these sweaters. They look amazing on our girls. Maybe. Come on, what's wrong? Suzanne, I have no business being in the store. I should not be shopping. Things are really tight. We're behind on our mortgage. Listen, Bill and I had the same problem, and we got some really great counseling, and it was free. I'm going to email you the information. If you even think you may be in danger of foreclosure, call the National Foundation for Credit Counseling today at 866-687-6322 or visit mortgagehelpnow.org. Public service from the NFCC. I knew I had a problem, but I didn't know what to do about it. I tried counting calories, I took pills, eating and eating, and then more eating. I really wanted to stop, but nothing could make me stop. At one point, it was so bad that I just felt like giving up. I felt so alone. Like nobody else could possibly understand. We understand. We're Overeaters Anonymous, and we have helped thousands of people just like you. People who want to stop their compulsive eating and start living a healthy, rewarding life. Overeaters Anonymous, help me get my life back. Now I eat in a way that's healthy and good for me. I never realized what I was missing out on. With OA, I am living again and loving it. Start living the life you deserve with help from Overeaters Anonymous. Find us on the web at OA.org. Wounded Warrior Project and other ways to support our heroes, like the Soldier Ride, sponsored by GEICO. Check out Newstalk1090.com, keyword warrior. News Talk 1090 is the talk of Muskegon. Well, you dead gum government, you sorry so-and-sos. You got your damn hands in every pocket of my clothes. Well, you dead gum, dead gum. Muskegon. And today we're with Muskegon County Drain Commissioner Dave Fisher. 
And we're talking about our county, Muskegon, and we're talking about money. We're talking about the increases that you and your employer, perhaps, and future businesses are going to have to pay for these increases for the Muskegon County wastewater system. This isn't a, a, a little thing. This is a big deal for our county. And, Dave, you and I have been talking here uh, during the break, uh, some of the things that might have been done to keep us out of this mess. And, of course, the, 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 the most important thing would have been to, to admit that there was a problem and, in fact, uh, do some specific uh, actual changes uh, to attend to it. But nothing's been done. And uh, we finally ended up uh, a little more than a week ago uh, saying it, in order to keep our bonds from defaulting, we have to have essentially an emergency bump up uh, in these rates. So you were, you were talking bonds. Let's, let's get into that. The, the wastewater system is, is, has um, accumulated over the last 10 years about $80 million in debt. Jim and and that that is about uh, it's very close to fifty percent of the gallonage that we have to bill out and one of the things that's been going on since we've lost this flow is that our elected officials <coughs> excuse me have been reluctant to actually put the increases in that should have been done on an annual basis in other words if we'd have gone up a certain amount every year uh, rather than waiting five six years and and running it up at twenty one uh, and a half percent, uh, you'd feel it less. But the reality is, is we'd still be where we are at today. It just wouldn't have felt uh, that bad because uh, it didn't happen all at once. Yeah, a no. big jump at, at one time is, is, but is a significant several, jump. But there were several significant jumps uh, ever since Sappy left. There was a significant one when Sappy left uh, the first year. But the, the reality of it is, is the, the political decision of how much should we raise these rates uh, we've held back, and, and we've actually charged less than what it costs us to pay the bills. And the ultimate uh, and decider? Hoping, and the ultimate decider was the Public Works Board. We've, okay. we've, we've done that because of business issues that you talk about and, and the, the homeowners. Uh, we've held back hoping that we could gain some more flow. Uh, was there any reason for hope? Yeah, there's been, and, and there still is today. There's, but there's well, let's go back to the last 10 years. Where there, was there some reason to, to expect that there would be a replacement for all or part of the sappy uh, usage? No, that's, that's, um, that's not going to happen. You're not going to find a business in today's world that's going to look at something uh, to the nature of about uh, you know, 15 to 20 million gallons a day. That's, you're not going to find those people. Uh, industry across the world is, is finding ways so to what, use less water what, and, what, and less sewage. What kind of hope did they have then? If you're not going to you know, replace them in total, what, what was the hope out there that would keep them from making what a normal business would do in a prudent world? They would, they would say, well, we've got a significant problem coming up. We're going to adjust to that. Companies, of course, lay people off. Companies cut back significantly. Uh, what was the hope that the county uh, commissioners primarily saw that kept them from doing, uh, making the tough decisions? There's, there's two functions, and they still exist today, Jim. Uh, the primary one is uh, groundwater, uh, working with the uh, Michigan Department of Environmental Quality on some of the cleanup sites and whether or not we can treat that groundwater versus them treating and releasing uh, to the surface water. Did anything come of that? Uh, those negotiations are ongoing. There's several sites across the county right now, Zephyr, the old Cordova site, the Marathon site on the, on the uh, city of Muskegon, uh, Muskegon Lake. Um, there are, there are and they would be uh, contracted by the state then to, to put uh, wastewater within our into our system. Yes. Oh, there, that, there's that, negotiations for that, which would amount to hope. about three million gallons a day. Which right now, when we're at twelve, you know, that's that's twenty five percent increase in in gallons. And the total and the total capacity, you say, was forty million. Forty three million. Okay, so that's that's an eight percent uh, increase. Uh, yeah. Any idea when that is likely to uh, to come to fruition? It's been very difficult. That's why I say it's been held back since uh, for the last five to seven years, thinking okay. we're going to get it next year, we're going to get it next year, we're going to we haven't got it, but we've got to do gotcha. something, and that's that's right. what we're dealing with. What today. else? What else might uh, it might the, have been? The on other the issue has been uh, there's been a very strong effort in Muskegon County, and we're working regionally right now to take a look at the food processing industry. The food processing industry uses a lot of water. Can we get them to locate in Muskegon, either out at the wastewater site or in some of our other? Um, industrial parks uh, and try and bring in uh, that type of business uh, um, because of the amount of water they use. How does a doubling of rates affect their interest in in our product or our service? Well, I think the, the doubling of rate affects everybody. They're all going to look at it. 
Uh, there's a any company's going to look at that, but I believe we are still very competitive across the the uh, the board with other uh, treatment uh, facilities because of the way we do things. The farm operation, uh, which helps subsidize the operations, has become a very large part of um, you know a revenue stream for us. Um, uh, you know, can, can we get, let's talk a little bit about this farm situation because. I was talking to the county uh, uh, executive uh, last week, Bonnie Hammersley, and I had just found out, uh, truly I was shocked when I heard this, that in fact the people that we hire to do the the actual farming out there at the wastewater site, which is really a, a, a very neat thing to see, uh, and it's very it's great that they're that they're doing some farming, but instead of hiring the kind of people that typically work in farms, which a normal agribusiness or a normal farmer would have, which tend to be lower paid workers, uh, we have fully pensioned, fully golden uh, uh, health, uh, dental, vision uh, benefited uh, Union County employees doing farming. Um, now, I know many, many people that have excess land uh, who uh, then choose not to farm it, and what they do is they, they rent it out to another farmer. Another maybe an agribusiness, maybe it's just an individual farmer, and then they take the net after that. It seems odd to me that we're really doing the best for the the citizens of the county and and do, really being serious about reducing costs when we're using uh, very well 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 paid union labor as farmers. So, uh, how does that work for you? What do you think about that? Well, there's one thing, Jim, to remember is that when the farm when when the snow hits the fields um, in, in in a typical farm. There's not a whole lot of work that gets done out there, and, and they become very idle. Our, our farm operators uh, wear a number of hats. Uh, we have a few seasonals, but uh, there's a lot of uh, dual um, operations where they have work that they do during the, the very technical work during the uh, winter months also. So they, it's, they're not just typical farmers. Why wouldn't big farms and other farmers use your same logic then? Why wouldn't they pay you know, very much higher than, than normal wages and have them working year-round. Why, why is the model that Muskegon County is using, which has brought us to the point where they're out of money and we've got to double the rates, why is that model better than the model that's used by virtually every other farming operation in the United States of America? I'm not so sure that it applies out there, Jim, but you're getting me into an area that uh, okay, fair I'm, enough, I'm fair not enough. real um, comfortable with. So. Okay, uh, let, let's uh, go back to what can we do going forward? Because we're in this situation, and, and, and I have heard, and I... I uh, I, I got to tell you, it really, really bothered me. Um, uh, one of the county commissioners, when this vote happened, uh, was a county commissioner. Um, oh my golly, I believe it was Scott Plummer. But he said uh, at the public meeting, he said, "This is nobody's fault," and I'm tired of it's nobody's fault when bad decisions happen. Uh, th th a lot of you may remember the the Exxon Valdez, uh, the big um, oil tanker that, that that crunched up on the shore uh, uh, back uh, in, in Alaska, uh, probably 10, 20, maybe more years than that. The um, the captain of that ship, as it turned out, was drunk, and uh, of course Exxon, as a corporation, got. Uh, d d horribly penalized, uh, not just in money, but in terms of just the way people viewed that company and their management. But when the uh, the captain of that ship uh, uh, was to be fired, he sued, and the court said, well, he was drunk, and it wasn't his fault. It was really Exxon's fault for hiring somebody who had a disease. So the entire Exxon Vel Valdez disaster was, it was nobody's fault. It just happened. And and we have a situation here where we've got a county commissioner, now d d to, to Scott Plummer's um, credit he he was not one of those who made these decisions he's only been around a short period of time so in his case at least until he made this last vote it wasn't his fault but to say that the county commission and and many of those and i and i, I do want to attend to, to we're talking about real people here uh we have the the democrat county chairman ken mahoney we have democrat jim derizinski we have the three republicans uh bob skolnick uh, john snyder and marv Engel who have been on this board now for nine years, on the county commission for nine years, and many of them have been on and off the, the public works board. But they are the people, five of those people anyway, those five have been there for a long time. Um, to hear somebody say it's not our fault, whose fault is it? I mean, is it, or is it just, again, and I hate to, to, to keep well, saying I, the same I thing, are we Jim, bad luck town? 
And, and, and Jim, I, I think a little bit of it falls there. It's it's an economic issue. It's it's a situation where the flow's not there. The county has been very active in looking for other revenue streams. The farm operation is a great example. I mean, it brings in revenue, and that holds the rates down. Uh, they're looking at other industry that could come out there. We're looking at the wind farm discussions that you're hearing a lot about, which would bring in funds into the wastewater. All of that can help keep those those costs from going up. But the main issue is flow. Okay, so and what do we do going forward? Not there, if that if that flow's not there, you know, I mean, it's going to cost us more to treat, to, you know, because you can't decrease the cost much more than we already have on the operation of that site. It's it's rather fixed. It's a it's it's a it's a it's a flow that, excuse me, it's a cost that just isn't going to go away. You sit on the Public Works Board. They make the ultimate decision. What is the Public Works doing right now to find an answer to what you just said is the big question, which is flow? What are they doing now? What, how, how are we going to get more flow? The the operation that's going on right now is through Muskegon Area First and through discussions with some of the other communities or outlying areas. Uh, of looking at uh, bringing in industry and, and finding ways to increase that flow. Most of that is done looking at the food industry, and that's nothing new. That's been going on for 20-some years. Um, with, with very, very minimal success. And, and it hasn't worked. We've looked at cranberries. We've looked at bringing CAFOs on site. We've looked at uh, a so number back, of so ways. Back when, our, back when the costs were half of what they're going to be, we were unsuccessful. Why, why would there be reason to believe that since we've doubled our, our prices that we're going to be more successful? It makes it more difficult. You're exactly right. But uh, that doesn't mean you stop trying. No, and, I understand and I, that. And I believe that's, that's what we're doing. We're working very hard. Uh, the, the, ro the one issue right now, which I think is important, which really was the driving factor of having to do what we had to do a week ago, was the fact that we have not raised these rates to the extent that they should have been raised if anybody was at fault, it's it's all of the parties that have an effect on that rate. One of the issues that that 50 percent of our rate is the debt, and that debt is a check you have to write every year. And when we don't get the flow that we project we're going to get at the end of the year, you still have to write that check. And it's that check that has been eating away at the operational funds, which we've had set aside for these times of uh, high costs, and, and now there's just no more of that fund left. That fund has dried up with $7 million, has been eaten up over a period of six to seven years because we have not charged what we should have been charging. Wait, now wait a minute. Are you saying that in the last, how many years did you say, five, six, seven years? Yes. Okay, we, there was $7 million in a fund. What was that $7 million for? That is the equipment revolving fund, I believe, is what they call it. I'm not sure. I'm not an accountant, but sure, it's, sure. it's a fund that's set aside. But to, why did they uh, have seven million dollars? It's set there to replace equipment and to uh, for operations uh, that we need to do, which might be repairs to a lift station, which could be a million and a half or whatever. Whatever. And that fund cost. is gone. That fund is primarily almost gone. Oh, so we're. <laughs> pardon my choke here. We're in worse shape than, than we realized because we've eaten up the fund that, which is used to replace equipment and, and other emergencies? $7 million? That's the, that's the decisions that have been made over the last six or seven years. Okay, so, so a county commissioner or certainly a, a member, well, I, I would say county commissioner because even if they don't sit on the board, they have a responsibility to be aware of, of, of the obviously very important things that are happening in our county. So these people who had the responsibility seven years ago said instead of increasing rates to what the real cost is, we will dig into this emergency fund? That's a that, question. <laughs> that's a question, and the answer to that is, is um, whether you call it an emergency fund or whatever, it's, it's cash on hand, and the answer to that is yes. Uh, now, Do you think that's, that's prudent? Not, that, that's is that a not, good idea? Was that a, is that prudent? Well, let me, let me first explain who, who's making that decision. It's, okay. there's, there's nine members on the Public Works Board that make that decision, but there's also that decision is, is gone over by the wastewater management committee which is all the users and that is uh, put to them as a vote also do we want to raise the rates or do we want to uh, spend some of the cash down but that that um that wastewater management committee though makes recommendations their vote doesn't really carry uh, uh legal weight does it doesn't carry any legal weight but it's a political statement from the users and sure. the board considers that in making their decisions okay so in other words what they they kind of did the, the, the coward's way. They said, we don't want to upset anybody. So we'll, since nobody really knows about the $7 million and how really important it is for emergencies, we'll just, in the, in the middle of the night, scoot away with the $7 million until we're totally out, and then we'll make a decision 
uh, that uh, is based on the fact that if we don't make it, our bonds are going to default. And, and needless to say, that would be catastrophic for the county, right? Well, yeah, if, the, if those bonds had problems. But I, I think whether that's a right or wrong decision, it's been a tough decision over the last six or seven years because raising the rates on any utility is, is a tough but Why thing. would it be tough to uh, – one of the things I noticed when, when there was a significant angst – uh, among the uh, county commissioners or the, the the board of public works, when they raised these rates, which was a, a double, and I can understand the angst, but there was no uh, public protest. There was no uh, nobody out there with placards. There was nobody screaming at them. Uh, why the angst? It would seem to me if you can get away with uh, uh, 25 percent in the last couple of years and now another uh, uh, 50 some percent uh, without any protest, why would they be uh, afraid of raising a two or three or four or five percent back? You know, uh, 15, 10, seven years ago. The recommendations from staff were always, I think, very optimistic in the fact that we would find a way to get out of here, that, that the flow was going to show up, that we were going to have groundwater, that we were going to get some contract with, with somebody that would bring a lot of flow out there, so, and, so the, and it just never materialized. So the sun will come up tomorrow. Uh, exactly it really replaces right. uh, really prudent decision and tough decision-making uh, with the people who've made those decisions in the past. Well, And that happened at the same time that we continued to borrow money for the improvements on the site, which we went from about uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $20 million in debt up to $80 million in debt. Whoa. So our debt was increasing. When, that's when did over that the same period of time. The, the last seven years? Yes, yeah, so that's been an improvement of, of uh, basically replacing all of the force mains and the pump stations and rebuilding them because they were 45 years old and needed to be uh, worked on. Oh, we're going to have to have you back, David. I appreciate <laughs> your help. Um, we, we're not looking to hang people, but if people uh, who've been elected and, and, and uh, given the responsibility to make tough decisions are not making those decisions, that's what this show is all about. We want to get to why we made the mistake and what we can do going forward. I don't seem to think that we've got any real answers going forward, short of at the ballot box a year from November. Uh, but uh, I very much appreciate uh, County Drain Commissioner Dave Fisher being here. Uh, it's a Sunday morning. It's a gorgeous Sunday morning. Um, thank you for being here. We will have you back. And, and you're, believe it or not, folks, uh, I would say arguably the most powerful uh, uh, elected office in our county is the drain commissioner. Um, and uh, this guy has been real nice to, to, to give us some information this morning. So, David, thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, Jim. It's always a pleasure to help um, put the real facts out on the table so that people can understand what's going on. Well, there's more facts that we're going to get here. Um, we we will be back. Actually, I will be back. Dave's going to go have his Sunday off. I'll be back with you at Ion Muskegon. Um, great discussion with Dave. Uh, we've got some other real interesting things coming up. Give us a call, 231-830-3109. We want you to be on the radio. <laughs> Well, you dead gum government, you sorry so and so's. You got your damn hands in every pocket of my clothes. Well, you dead gum, dead gum, dead gum government. Uh -huh. A message from Liam Neeson, Orlando Bloom, Lawrence Fishburne, Salma Hayek, Mia Farrow, and Taya Leone. They do not have to die, but they do. 24,000 children every day. They die for reasons we can prevent. Like not getting enough food or medicine or clean, safe water to drink. 24,000 children every day. But we are gaining ground. A generation ago, twice as many children were dying. Still, 24,000 every day? They do not have to die, but they do. They die because they are young and vulnerable. They die because through no fault of their own, they are poor. 24,000 children. 24,000 children. 24,000 children every day? My name is Taya Leone. My name is Salma Hayek. My name is Orlando Bloom. My name is Mia Farrow. My name is Lawrence Fishburne. My name is Liam Neeson, and I believe that number should be zero. Believe in zero. Join the effort. Visit UNICEFUSA.org. Car number seven is pulling into the pit. What's my winning diabetes plan? Start taking action now for diabetes. Medications. Got them. And my insulin supplies. Exercise. Most days. Blood sugar level. On target. Diet. Eating healthy. A1C. Under control. Managing diabetes, including controlling blood sugar, is a team effort that requires a plan that's right for you. For more information, visit standfordiabetes.org. A public service of TCOYD made possible with support from Santa Fe Aventis, U.S. 
Sirens, jet engines, car horns, leaf blowers. Today's world puts our sense of hearing on overload. Luckily, there are places we can go to refocus our senses. Our national wildlife refuges. It's amazing how much more you'll hear when you just take a minute to listen. Like a stirring chorus of songbirds warbling in the treetops. Or the industrious beaver slapping its tail in the mountain pond over baritone bullfrogs. Or the pulsating beat of a pileated woodpecker looking for a meal. When you hear these things, you're hearing the world the way we found it. With over 500 refuges across America, you don't have to go far to make a special connection with nature. Learn more at fws.gov slash refuges. That's fws.gov slash refuges. Um, make every weekend polka time. Will you dead gum government, you sorry so-and-sos? You got your damn hands in every pocket of my clothes. Will you dead gum dead? Okay, we are back at the Eye on Muskegon. Uh, I've let our wonderful uh, Muskegon County Drain Commissioner Dave Fisher uh, scoot, the, scoot the area here. Uh, we are talking Muskegon, folks. Give us a call, 231-830-3109. Uh, this is your chance to be famous, folks. You could be on the radio. Give us a call, 830-3109. Um, I, uh, early in the show, I mentioned that uh, there was another uh, event coming up. It's an election that, that I think that a lot of you may not be aware of, and it, it's really got my, my bunions in a beehive. Um, I live in Norton Shores, and uh, I have been going to the Norton Shores City Council meetings. And I recently found out that uh, Norton Shores, and, and again, this, this is important even if you don't live in, 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 in my town, because this type of thing is happening in other communities. Norton Shores is having an election this uh, November 8th, uh, to elect four, which is about half of the uh, city uh, uh, city council members. Now, there was a primary back in May, not very well covered by the local media. There was a primary back in May, and only three people, uh, the currently sitting city council folks, decided to run. They were unopposed. Uh, one of the city council uh, members has decided not to run. So for four open spots, we only have three people running. Now, it seems to me that if you are a community that cares about citizen input and if you really give a hoot about bringing uh, the, the, the value and the intellect and the power of your, uh, the, your voters and your citizens in, you're going to say, hey, this, there's something wrong here. We've got to promote this event. Now, they should have done it, in my, in my view. They should have done it uh, uh, before the, the primary. But since the primary, uh, which is back in May now, there have been many, many months to go by, and now we're a little more than a... Uh, um, or actually it's almost exactly uh, uh, a month uh, before this election, we will have an empty seat on the council unless someone runs as a write-in candidate. Now, if someone does not run as a write-in candidate, then the good folks who are not publicizing this election, the good folks on the city council of Norton Shores, will be able to appoint their own buddies. You know, they're probably not going to appoint somebody who, who, who would be critical of them. They'll appoint somebody who, you know, is a good, good go along to get along tight. Um, now, that's nothing new. Uh, it doesn't make these folks bad people or anything. But it really does give you a sense of who they are. Now, I, uh, I, I'll, I hate to talk about me per se, but I've been going to these uh, Norton Shores City Council meetings now for the last couple of months. And I have been uh, standing up during the time for public comment and saying, folks, this is a distressing. We've got a wonderful community here, uh, educated uh, probably a little higher income, uh, higher education level than some of the other communities in, in Muskegon County. And uh, we should, it's ridiculous that, that we only have three people running for four open seats. Can you please do something about promoting it? Well, they've done absolutely nothing. So I'm going to try to do a, a few little things here for you. Uh, you can, if you live in Norton Shores, and this is a, a ward election, and a ward election means that only about half of Norton Shores uh, will be able to vote in this one open seat. You can vote in the, uh, uh, in the election uh, if you're so inclined, and you can run in the election uh, as a write-in. Uh, but but this, is, this is Ward 2. Now, Ward 2 
is uh, what the what the Chronicle in the past has called uh, the their the uh, the West uh, Ward. The boundaries are Sherman Boulevard to the north, Henry Street to the east, and Porter Road to the south, and of course Lake Michigan to the west. If you live in Ward Two, you can run as a write-in candidate. Now that's really an easy thing to do. You can um, contact Norton Shores City, talk to the clerk and say, I'd like to get the paperwork necessarily to run as a write-in candidate. Uh, You can talk to our wonderful Muskegon County clerk and her equally uh, wonderful, um, I'm not sure what Kim Grimm's uh, title is, but you can talk to Kim Grimm, who's uh, heavily involved in the elections at Muskegon County Clerk's Office. Now their phone number is 724 Six two two one. Uh, by the way, all of this is on my website or on my uh, my blog, MuskegonTaxpayers.com. dot Muskegon Alliance dot com. That's all one word, Muskegon Taxpayers Alliance. So all of this is right there. Um, but what's simply necessary to do to run as a write-in candidate is to talk with the city of Norton Shores, talk with the uh, the county clerk their clerk's office or you go online or you can even call me um matter of fact why don't you write this down you can call me and this is a magic jack phone so you have to put the 231 in but it's 231-421-4409 you can call me about the show or you can call me about your interest in running uh for the city council of norton shores uh you can also email me at i on muskegon that's e-y-e on muskegon all one word Ionmuskegon at gmail.com. But all you need to do is fill out a simple form, and you can run as a write-in candidate. And at this point, if you get one vote, if you vote for yourself, <laughs> you may very well be on the Norton Shore City Council. And, and, and I would assume, I can only assume because their actions speak greater than their words, is that they really don't want you to know about this. There's been no uh, letters to the editor from the, from the Norton Shore's uh, uh, leaders. There has been no, a matter of fact... <laughs> I think this is kind of a sad situation. If you go onto the Norton Shores City website and you look at November 8th, which is they have a calendar. They, they actually have a couple calendars. And if you look at that calendar, it doesn't even list Election Day as an event, much less the fact any place on that website that uh, there is a, a, a seat that has nobody running for it. Um, I, think it's, I think it's frankly wrong. Um, I'm going to be promoting this on every one of my shows. My letter to the Chronicle has already been sent. I would hope it will get published shortly. Uh, If you're interested in running, I'm very interested in helping you. If you are interested in um, uh, supporting somebody else, like I said, you've got two ways to get in touch with me. Uh, Folks, it's when people like us who sit back and don't do something, when the people that we send a very clear message we send a message to uh in their view our betters the electeds that they don't need to attend to us they don't need to talk to us the union people contact them all the time you should see the 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 most recent contracts that were just signed at norton shores we'll talk about that at another show uh the contractors and the people who want contracts from the uh, the, the voters or the, the people who make those votes on the city council, they contact them. The uh, the environmentalists give them a call and stop in and talk with them. Uh, Norton Shores, uh, which of course was out of money to fix potholes on their roads not that long ago, needed new millage for that, had enough money to put in a uh, a green electric plug-in at their plant. You might want to go visit or at, at their uh, at Norton Shores uh, City Hall. You might want to go take a peek at that uh, and see if that's a really good deal. Probably an open spot to park. Um, uh, again, it's easy to do. Oh, now, by the way, there's a couple of dates that you must you need to know about. Um, the last day that you can sign up as a write-in uh, candidate is, uh, let's see, it's two Fridays before um, the uh, the election, which is Friday, October 28th. So you've got a, almost three weeks now uh, where if you go in, get that simple form, you fill it out, that's all you need to do. And Oscar's telling me we're running out of time, and I got a million things to talk about. Um, uh, as far as the election is concerned, uh, you can get an absentee ballot. You don't even need to show up to vote. All you need to do is give uh, the city of Norton Shores a call seven nine eight four three nine one, or you can call the county clerk, or you can go online and get the form. They will mail you the uh, the absentee ballot, folks. If you don't vote 
they're going to vote for you. Now, let me just tell you a couple nasty little things that have happened in the not-too-distant future. We had an election. They call it a uh, public uh, service election or a public, uh, public safety election uh, in Norton Shores uh, back in February. The yeses on this election were 2,419. The noes were 2,157. In other words, that's a 262 margin, which was another fairly substantial uh, amount of spending that, that we, the voters, allowed uh, the city of Norton Shores to do. Um, number of registered voters in, in Norton Shores, 18,600. So by a 262 margin, we had a big vote to spend more money. You didn't show up. Now, they had this election back in uh, in February. So uh, uh, needless to say, they did that election at a time when they figured you wouldn't show up. And since November is a day uh, when people do tend to think about elections, they're not letting even know in any way, shape, or form that they've got an election coming up. Your vote does matter. When you figure 262 people, census, total number of people living in Norton Shores is around 24,000 people. It's 24,000 people. 262 people uh, were, were, were the margin in this last election. So when you think that your vote doesn't count, let me tell you right now, folks, it does. Uh, you can imagine if you had uh, 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 10 people who knew 20 others, you'd have almost enough to, 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 to spin this election over. So, um, uh, Oscar, what, what kind of time have we got? we got two minutes. Well, I'm going to go quickly here, folks. Um, I said quickly. And... Uh, with live radio, you can imagine. Once again, I've lost my clothes. Here we go. Heads up to all of you. Uh, remember, I meet every Tuesday and Thursday at Carmen's Cafe. And that's uh, downtown uh, Muskegon Corner, Jefferson Clay. Um, this week, uh, we'll be meeting Tuesday and Thursday from 2 to 3.15. Stop in, have a bite. Uh, we've got uh, Wi-Fi there. Uh, when you walk in the door, just ask anybody, where's the guy from the radio show? Um, Get out your pencils and pens again. Just if you need to get in touch with me, I on Muskegon at gmail.com. Call me at 231 421 4409. You can check out my blogs, Muskegon Pundit and Muskegon Taxpayers Alliance. Um, the podcast is up and running. Thank you, folks. You can listen to this show 24 7. If you want to just have it as uh, your background music in your house, you can listen to it all the time. Nothing better than listening to I on Muskegon 24 7. Um, Thanks again, County Commissioner Dave Fisher, Oscar, the entire crew. Next week, Sunday, October 16th, Muskegon County's got $100 million in unfunded employee pension and health care debt. And you've got to pay it one way or another. How did this happen? Is it just bad luck? Oakland County out there by Detroit is way bigger than Muskegon, and they have zero unfunded pension and health care debt. We've got $100 million. What are they doing that Muskegon isn't? We'll ask the tough questions, and I'll try to get some answers. Just join us. I am Muskegon every Sunday morning, 9 to 10, at News Talk 1090 WKBZ, the talk of Muskegon. Thank you, folks. We'll see you next A message from Orlando Bloom, Liam Neeson, Lawrence Fishburne, Salma Hayek, and Taya Leone. 24,000 children die every day from preventable causes. Like not getting enough food or medicine. Or clean, safe water to drink. But we are gaining ground. A generation ago, twice as many children were dying. Still, 24,000 every day? I believe. I believe. I believe that number should be zero. Believe in zero. Join the effort. Visit unicefusa.org. We've got all these credit card bills. We've got to find a way to get out from under this debt. The National Foundation for Credit Counseling is a nonprofit organization that has been helping people for 60 years. Speak with a counselor at 800-388-2227 or visit debtadvice.org. This is a public service campaign for the NFCC. The Talk of Muskegon is News Talk 1090, WKBC Muskegon, and heard 24 hours a day on WOOD HD2 Muskegon. Catch the show Sundays at noon on News Talk.
Once again, it's Sunday morning. Good morning and welcome to the Talk of Muskegon with the Polka Melodies. It's 10 o'clock this morning and the Polka Melodies is here with you all the way until noon today. So sit back, relax and enjoy. I'm Tom Sanaki, your West Michigan Polka DJ. Lots of good music and entertainment for you today. So welcome to the Sunday Polka Melodies. Hello, hello, hello. What a wonderful Tuned into the Talk of Muskegon with News Talk 1090 WKBZ Muskegon WOD HD2 Muskegon and, and News Talk 1090.com. One minute after 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning, October 9th, 2011, and you've got good music and entertainment all the way up until noon today for you and the entire family. So turn up the volume, sit back, relax, and enjoy today's show. Involve the younger generation. Hey, it's a lot of fun, guaranteed. Hello, hello, hello. What a wonderful Box style here with the Mahoning Valley Button Box Club and my little girl. Yeah. 